when I was a kid, I bumped into these things. I don't know about magic. I... I always called it The Shining. I'm curious if there was anything that you kind of took from the book that maybe wasn't specifically in the script. Well, I think it, 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 they go hand in hand. It's difficult for me to even remember which, you know, what kind of things I might have got from the novel versus the script. I, I, I don't remember. The, the truth is, at the end of the day, it's, uh, you're drawing from all of it and from your own imagination and from Kubrick's movie and from the Shining novel and from the Doctor Sleep novel. So, um, I don't really, I haven't got, a, I can't pinpoint exactly anything sure. no, <laughs> other than it's very useful, obviously, to have this Bible of, you know, Stephen King's novel becomes like your your Bible for your characters, like everything in it that you need. Kind of specifically to talk about kind of the relationship between Stephen King and the, uh, Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Yeah. Uh, one aspect of that book that he didn't feel was emphasized enough was Jack's alcoholism, which yeah. obviously becomes a very huge part of Dan's life. And it is made such an emphasis in this film. I'm curious just about your approach to that aspect of the character, which is crucial. Yes. Well, I feel like we have readdressed that in this, you know, I think Mike was very clear that The Shining was a novel that was written about al alcoholism and addiction, and Do Dr. Sleep is a novel that was written about recovery. Mm -hmm. And my character, of course, as the young boy from The Shining, when we find him at his sort of rock bottom, and he is um, an alcoholic, and 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 uh, the, I, I think it was really key. It was one of the reasons I wanted to play him so much, because it's, it's of interest to me. And um, the fact that he then finds recovery and. Uh, that it was very much central to his to his sort of psyche for me to play him, I think. <gasps> I'm running away from myself, I guess. I wanted to actually specifically ask you about working yeah. with Rebecca Ferguson because oh. Rose the Hat is such an incredibly scary, Jeez. menacing villain and not a fan of Abra. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I am curious just kind of about your experience working with her on set and kind of just like when the cameras were rolling, that changeover. She's incredibly talented. I just want to break off a piece of her talent and steal it for my own. Um, She's terrifying. She's so good at playing terrifying. And you know, when we were talking, sometimes she'd switch to Rose and I'd get very scared like, where, where did this Rebecca go? Oh no, oh dear. <laughs> and they noticed that little girl. Wow, hi there. Get out of my head, get out! Working with Kylie also, I mean, she is such a sweet kid, but of course, Abra and Rose don't exactly get along. So no. kind of what was that kind of relationship on set? I have to say, working with children, because they haven't yet developed that need to to there's a self-centeredness in, in us grown-ups and we want to achieve something and we need people to think something of us etc we always keep on working for other people and actually having that purity of 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 real acting that's what i get from children acting because my acting needs to be as real as possible to give them the possibility to react right and i can see when i'm not being good because it's transfiguring through their acting as well these children were beyond par, which meant we would be laughing and she'd be dancing because she's a musical, she's an artist. Um, and then she would just close off and there would come this, this filter of pure horror and hate. And I'd think, oh my gosh, where did this come from? <laughs> I actually had a meeting with Mike in one scene because I saw the playback. And I said, I think Rose just lost her power. And he said, I know. <laughs> And I thought, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> fine, if that's what you want. You are actually one of the few filmmakers who has taken on more than one Stephen King adaptation. It's like you, Frank Darabont, Rob, Rob Reiner, and maybe a couple others. Do you think that you'd still be game to take on another one? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's been in my dream since I was a kid to be able to adapt Stephen King. And, and he's let me play in, in that sandbox two times. Um, I would be thrilled to do it again, and and we're he's he's been happy both times, which is still like, um, as long as that keeps up. If he'll have me back, I'm 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 there for the long haul. I'll do as many as he'll let me. So, uh, we're we're talking actively about what's next, and we have a great idea for that. I'm not allowed to talk about yet, sure. but uh, it's really cool. And yeah, I, I expect there'll be um, there'll be another another chance to play in that sandbox very soon. Yes, you run, dear. And then I will find you. And you will scream for years. Come play with us.
forever and ever. You should go home. Huh? You said you needed my help. No, not you. Oh, you talking to her? She's here now. <laughs>